Hello, and welcome to this edition of Your Schools. I am Dr. Christine Mahoney, Superintendent of the East Granby Public Schools, and welcome to this edition. Today, we're speaking with the principal of Carl D. Allgrove School, Mrs. Mela Eulinger, and she is responsible for all of the students and families and the programs in our pre-K through grade two school, uh, located in the center of town and a uh, program that houses not just the kindergarten through grade two program but also our family resource center uh, that really falls under the auspices of our student support services. So Mela, welcome. Thank you very welcome much, to Dr. Your Mahoney. Schools. Thank you. Uh, Mela, can you first, uh, for our viewing audience, just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, about how long you've been at All Grove School and what are some of the things that get you up in the morning and bring that enthusiasm on that takes you into All Grove School every day? Well, I am starting, or I'm well into my fifth year at All Grove School as the principal. But I began my career 20 plus years ago as a special education teacher. And I have worked um, in that capacity at both the elementary and the middle school levels in both the rural districts and an urban district. Um, and then from teaching in the classroom, I moved into administration as a special education director slash assistant principal of a K-6 elementary school district in, um, in Marlboro, Connecticut. And from there, I came here. I had the wonderful opportunity to come to East Granby and become the principal of a wonderful elementary school. Wonderful, wonderful. Getting me up in the morning, it's always all about children. It's all grove, as every school has, wonderful little beings that prance on through the door every single morning and inevitably and consistently make you smile. You start your day with a smile. And that's reassuring for the little ones it coming in the door every morning so. to see so the it's adults a, it's welcoming and smiling at them. It's a reciprocal relationship. Awesome. Awesome. So I know that you mm -hmm. uh, recently worked with your parents in your school community mm -hmm. and uh, looked at uh, your mission statement. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us a little bit about the mission statement that you have and how you translate that into the skills and attributes that the, your students take with them when they leave you at the end of grade two. When we went through the revision process for our mission statement, it was very important to us to get feedback from our parent community to find out from them what they held near and dear as essential for their children and what they um, felt was most important about what All Grove School could offer them and their children. Mm -hmm. So a team of teachers drafted a, a survey for parents. We received the information back and we called out some essential characteristics. Um, we, we put together a mission statement that we felt spoke to the adults. And it really spoke to about valuing each individual child as unique, um, as having a set of characteristics that, was, that were not just about academic learning, but also about social and emotional development, particularly at this level. That was very important to all of our stakeholders, is that we not lose sight of children as little people growing up and learning how to navigate not only the academic world, but also the social world. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we read our mission statement, and we felt, oh, yes, it speaks to us. But we need to translate it so it speaks to children as well, so that they can own it, that they have a sense of what All Grove School is all about. So the team put together um, almost a poem of sorts that we have used over the last several years to help children own and embrace our school community. And it's right here. Um, we, we talk about it at our school assemblies, we talk about it at our morning meetings with children, and it's what All Grove School represents, mm -hmm. 
And I believe it's what children feel when they live with us for two, three, four years. So it's right here. It's a lovely place. Great, great. So, Mela, how does this mission statement that you have uh, put together with your school <clears throat> community, how does this mission statement align with our district goals for learning? Well, very much so it is focused on learning and children being able to develop the skills that they need, the foundational skills that they will need for their future learning. So it's, it's talking about um, how do we engage individual learners? How do we show respect for the uniqueness of every child and every adult in the building? Because we consider All Grove School a place where we all grow, children and adults alike. Um, and so we're looking for ways in which to engage children in authentic ways, in learning that means something to them, mm -hmm. and in ways in which they can demonstrate what they know in a host of different through a host of different modalities. So it embraces what we believe they need to have academically as foundational skills, but also ways in which they can express their creativity, ways they can explore learning through the use of technology, and ways in which they can explore learning in a collaborative community environment of their classroom. Great. So the district has, as you know, uh, several areas that are, you know, h highlighted as uh, mm -hmm. focus areas for this year. Tell us how you are engaging your learners and your faculty and staff in helping to achieve the goals in the areas of English language arts, mm -hmm. mathematics, science, okay. the arts. When we drafted our school improvement plan, we spent a lot of time looking at the district goals. And um, we have aligned our plan with three components of the districts. One in which we have, uh, we're focusing on the use of technology to enhance learning and as a tool for assessing learning. We are looking at communication with our families and with the community at large because we do very much consider ourselves in a very close partnership with our families. And of course, we are looking at student achievement. We focus often in the area of reading because at these early levels, reading, there's the skills that they're developing now are the skills that will form the basis for their future learning when they move from learning to read to reading to learn. Mm -hmm. And I have seen over the last several years how that dichotomy has um, really integrated itself even at the very basic level. That children, while they're at All Grove and they are learning to read, they are also using those skills to learn from a variety of text sources, whether it be a book or whether it be something that's technology platform based. Mm -hmm. In the area of mathematics, we are working very closely with children at this level to develop the concept, conceptual understanding that they need for um, future mathematics. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of exploration of our number system. Um, how numbers are created, what numbers look like in all different forms, before we begin to talk about basic fact fluency. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, the other essential piece of mathematics today is the importance of problem solving. So even as young as kindergarten, children are engaging in activities that ask them to think differently about a problem and to work together to solve that problem in a variety of ways. So we are hoping that children develop a skill set that allows them the confidence to explore ideas in different ways, as well as the persistence to stick with a task that could be challenging. Right. So Mela, one of the things that we try to do in, in the district is to ensure <coughs> vertical articulation mm -hmm. as much as we ensure horizontal mm -hmm. articulation. Mm -hmm. So in an earlier edition of your schools, we spoke with Sherry Burke, who's mm -hmm. the principal at R.D. Seymour School, 
and she described her school's uh, involvement with the Teachers College mm -hmm. Readers Writers Workshop out of Columbia University mm -hmm. and uh, intimated that uh, at Carl the All Girls mm -hmm. School uh, teachers were also using the same model. Absolutely. So can you talk a little bit about how your teachers are using that model um, this year in particular uh, to work with students around developing their reading, writing, and communication skills. Absolutely. We're very excited that we have had the opportunity to become a partnership school with Teachers College Readers Writers Workshop. But even before that official affiliation, the teachers at All Grove School have been working very hard with the workshop model to implement that in their classrooms. Um, as Sherry probably talked about, there has been a lot of cross-grade level collaboration because the workshop model has the same structure in every grade level. It just looks a little differently depending on whether you're talking to a kindergartner or a fifth grader. Okay. But that vertical collaboration has helped us support one another in our efforts to implement the workshop model. We are using it in both reading and writing, and um, it is very exciting to see the teachers embrace it as they have. They are fully on board with it. Every day is an adventure in Readers and Writers Workshop, and children are um, authentically engaged in what they're doing. They are spending a lot of time reading and right. practicing reading and talking with one another about what they're learning from their books. Um, you will see the evidence of it in classrooms through the charts that teachers are hanging around the room. You will see it in evidence of the sticky notes the children are filling out as they track their reading and they're thinking about their reading. Um, you will see it in their writer's notebooks as they are exploring how they express themselves, not only in what they have to say, but as young as kindergarten, what are the letters that match the sounds in the word that I want to write down. Mm -hmm. And we're spending a lot of time helping our young readers and writers look closely and think deeply mm -hmm. about not only what they're reading, but about what they want to say and how can they express that. If you don't have the spelling of the word, can you show me a close, detailed picture of what your message is? And can you stretch the sounds in that word that you want to put down on your piece of paper? Mm -hmm. And I see that every day in classrooms. And the other, I think, the very critical piece of the workshop model um, is that children are practicing reading at levels that are appropriate for them. And this unique ability to individualize for children gives them worthwhile practice, as opposed to all children reading the same text, whether it fits mm -hmm. their learning levels or not. So in addition to the uh, mini lesson that the teacher provides and the guided reading, that she provides children, conferencing every day with children. They are practicing their reading in books that they can read. And I think what we have seen is that children move through the reading levels at a rate that's appropriate for them, but they're moving right. and they're feeling successful along the way. That, that is very important uh, that students are feeling uh, that they are being successful because you've <clears throat> heard the old adage that success breeds success. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when the students experience success and they're, they become more engaged, mm -hmm. and I have mm -hmm. had the, the great fortune of being able to observe the, mm -hmm. the Teachers College model uh, in action, mm -hmm. and I can certainly say that the students are very engaged mm -hmm. in their reading and they are very, very in tuned to mm -hmm. all of the things that they should be looking for and they are finding new ways to express themselves and I think that's a wonderful thing to get students becoming more and more expressive and, and being able to speak about what they're reading because many times, as you know, children learn mm -hmm. to say words but not right. necessarily extract meaning. Right. And so I think what I have seen with this model is that the students are able to do both of those things and to do it very well. 
Uh, tell us a little bit about how your teachers are utilizing technology uh, with, st with students to help them to read more and to support their reading, mm -hmm. whether in school or out of school. Yeah. Um, I think that um, our teachers are very excited about the technology possibilities at All Grove School. And each time we add a new piece of technology, we're asking teachers to update their skill set as well. And they embrace that fully. We have been very fortunate at All Grove School to have been um, afforded the opportunity to have two carts of iPads. And this year, just recently, to have received two carts of Chromebooks. Now you might think that Chromebooks in a pre-K to two elementary school seems to not fit, but I'm going to tell you that our second graders are using our Chromebooks on a daily basis, that they know how to log on, that they know how to access the web-based programs that we have available. Um, and they're very independent in doing so. So it's very exciting for me to see children so engaged in technology for extended periods of time. Mm -hmm. They're practicing their math facts. They are um, accessing the Mayan reading opportunities. They are accessing resources such as Pebble Go, where even children as young as kindergarten can go on and decide that they want to learn about lions and they can find books that may even be above their reading level, but that text is supported with reading. And so I have seen kindergartners, two little heads together, pouring over an iPad, listening and reading along with text on frogs or toads or whatever they were interested in. So. I think that the, right now the iPads seem appropriate for our K and 1, and our second graders are all on board 100% with our Chromebooks. That's awesome. And after the first of the year, our second graders are going to become mentors to our first graders so that they will learn how to log on to the Chromebook and be able to use um, an online platform for perhaps some typing or some using and exploring the Mayan readers mm -hmm. or the Pebble Go or Starfall yeah. or Discovery Ed. It's amazing and it's wonderful. Yeah. to see them just, they're drawn to the technology and they are using it so appropriately to support their learning and to develop the skills that they're going to need in third, fourth, and fifth grade to take the Smarter Balanced online assessment. Awesome. It, it's important uh, for, for our viewers to know mm -hmm. that prior to this point, mm -hmm. we had one when we still do have one computer lab in Carl the Olive mm -hmm. School. And teachers had to rotate mm -hmm. and get students in there. And our students had been receiving uh, some instruction around their keyboarding mm -hmm. skills, learning the letters on the keyboard. And it's intriguing to me, I had the opportunity to watch some of the second graders using the Chromebooks. And now they are so comfortable uh, using the keyboard and so comfortable navigating uh, on the Chromebooks. I've watched them in the lab as well and they are engaged, they're riveted mm -hmm. to the computer screen and really enjoying themselves. You, you could you know, move a table and make a lot of noise yeah. and they would never even blink an eye no. because they are so focused on, on what they're learning uh, using the technology. And they're supportive of one another. Absolutely. And, um, you know, the Algrove teachers are masters at linking the use of technology to the learning that the children are engaging in. It's not separate from, right. it's a part of. And so, for instance, just recently an example I can give you is um, the students in second grade are working on a nonfiction unit in Reader's Workshop. And as, a, um, as small groups, they've been studying one particular topic. And they have a performance piece that's attached to each unit. Mm -hmm. And many of them have decided to do posters. Well, a natural 
um, outcome of doing a posters is that your posters need to teach. And so rather than writing facts about their unit of study, they are using the Chromebooks, a Google Doc, to type their facts which they will then be able to bold, enlarge the type, mm -hmm. print, revise, all of the things that we as writers do in our everyday lives. Our second grade, our seven-year-olds are doing that as a way of teaching. So it's tied to not only their reading, but it's tied to their writing, and it will be tied to sharing what they've learned with their classmates. And that's wonderful because I know that at R.D. Seymour School they have a goal that every student will publish mm -hmm. something that they've written. So it's great that at, Carly, at, at All Grove School mm -hmm. that the students are having an opportunity to learn and to hone those mm -hmm. skills. Uh, so when they get to Seymour School they mm -hmm. will be able to focus more on the content right. of the writing and not on the, the um, logistics the, right. of and, yeah. and the actual uh, elements that are involved yeah. in publishing right. something. But That's I will great. say that the All Grove second grade teachers have a goal that their students will type something on a Google Doc and publish it this year as well. Awesome. So that, that, that really is awesome. So the vertical alignment is a progression mm -hmm. up and down the, yeah. um, the grade levels. Great. So I know that at All Grove School you have some incredible after school programs. Mm -hmm. and that uh, some students from All Grove School have really mm -hmm. mastered uh, one particular program, the Invention Convention, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. have gone on to display their inventions mm -hmm. at the Legislative mm -hmm. Office Building and gone on to be recognized yes. in the statewide competition. Yes. So tell us a little bit about uh, that program and how it has uh, helped your school community. Um, well. For those of you that don't know about Connecticut Invention Convention, it is a statewide program that um, is held every year at the Gamble Pavilion on the campus of UConn in stores. And it starts with um, six different lessons on creativity and problem solving. And I was so lucky to have a teacher want to bring it with me to All Grove School and then to have other teachers help sustain it at All Grove School. So it has been an after school program for three years now and a, the, a group of students interested in the invention process um, a, attend these after school programs and they learn about the different aspects of creativity and innovation and problem solving. And those who choose to go on to identify a problem in their world or in the world at large, they then come up with a solution. And part of the invention process is that you build a prototype for your solution. Um, you build a prototype, you try it out, and when you participate in your local invention convention, you present your invention to a panel of judges um, who then rate you on a variety of factors, your presentation, the completion of your booklet, um, the originality and uniqueness. When I think of it at um, All Grove School, and the first year we did it, we, we had a kindergartner participate in Invention Convention and stand in front of a panel of adults and talk about what his problem was that he was trying to solve and how he went about putting together his solution to the problem. It's pretty remarkable. Um, it's really, it's really remarkable that they're able to communicate to a broader audience about their thinking. Um, all children, we have taken all children to the legislative office building every year where there are displays all over that complex and the legislature um, and their visitors to the Capitol stop by and engage children five, six, seven, in our case, mm -hmm. In, in conversations about their, their thinking yes. and their inventions. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing to watch the transformation. They get set up, they're a little hesitant at first, and before you know it, they are asking people to come over so that they can talk to the, these individuals about their inventions. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, 
You know, I think the other benefit there is that they get to see children's invention from around the state. They get to see just how big this is. Mm -hmm. It's not just about All Grove School. Yeah. Um, that it's that they're a part of something much more significant um, than just little All Grove School. Right, and right. and we have sent each year several students to the state invention convention, yes. which is a big deal. It's a way big deal for them. Good, awesome. So in in about one minute that we have left, can you no, just no, no. tell us tell us what it is that makes you most proud to be the principal of Carl D. All Girls School? Um, it's hard to pin it down to one quality, Dr. Mahoney. There's a palpable feeling when you walk into All Grove School that it's a, a warm and welcoming community. Mm -hmm. I think, and I'm very proud of that, but if I have to cull it down to something even more than that, it really is about the commitment, the dedication, and the professionalism of my teachers and my staff. It is mm -hmm. unwaveringly always A1 the, at their best. Mm -hmm. They are absolutely passionate about what they do mm -hmm. and they're passionate about doing it the best that they can on behalf of children. Yeah. So it's a it's a wonderful place to live and learn. Yeah. I have to say, you know, with my office being in the same structure as as all grow school that I, I just really admire and appreciate the focus on the student. Mm -hmm. um, the students <coughs> there, I can tell, they feel loved. Mm -hmm. They feel that others care about them and, and the faculty and staff care for mm -hmm. them. And uh, they seem very comfortable in their learning mm -hmm. spaces and they are so happily engaged mm -hmm. in, in their learning, and mm -hmm. I think that's a wonderful thing. So It is a wonderful yeah, place. Yeah, I, I think um, the, the foundation of our education program mm -hmm. is, is quite strong. We work so. very hard at it. Yeah, we do, we do. Well, thank you very much, Mela, for thank joining you. us today. And uh, this brings us to the end of another session of Your Schools. Thank you very much.